Hi everyone, it's Dylan here again from Dixon Humphreys. Um, so since the last video, um, I had a lot of great comments from the previous video uh, and thank you all for your kind words and, and, and words of encouragement, by the way, it means the world to me. Um, one request that I hook a team spot up to uh, a different model, and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, there was some other requests around sort of reaching into external databases and bringing that that uh, that data back in to inform the answer uh, that comes from the model. Um, I haven't got to that bit yet. I will do though. I definitely want to do that. Uh, so we won't be covering that today, but that's going to be in a follow up video, which I hope to uh, hope to do in the next couple of weeks. Um, so what have I got to show you today? Well, this is what we're going to make. OK. Um, I've got a bot here which is talking with DeepSeek. Now, how do we know it's talking with DeepSeek? Well, I don't know if you've noticed here, but I've sort of asked, asked it, what is the capital of France? And then I get these sort of four paragraphs uh, or four sentences, if you like, of, um, of sort of inner monologue, right? So this is DeepSeek doing its thinking. Okay, okay, the user is asking, what is the capital of France? Let me break this down. The question seems straightforward, but should I check for any possible typos on misunderstanding? So it's just having a bit of a conversation with himself. Uh, this, like I say, is kind of like the inner monologue, the thinking steps. And then down here, we have the actual answer. OK, so like I said, this is talking with DeepSeek. Um, I can say, which model are you? Um, it will have quite a bit, a bit of a long think about it, like I say, because it is deep sea. It's doing all this sort of reasoning be beforehand. So I'm, I'm just hoping I'm not going to cut this, by the way. I'm just going to try and pad over it while it comes up with the answer. But the key thing to, to highlight here is that obviously, um, there we go. I am deep sea R1 an assistant created exclusively by the Chinese company deep sea. Fair enough. So. The key thing here is that I've swapped it out for DeepSeek. So in theory, it should be easy enough to swap it out for other models, um, whatever you might have deployed. Now, so what do you mean what I have deployed? I'm going to cover that. So what we're going to need to do is go into Azure AI Foundry. We're going to basically what we call deploy a model. OK, it's going to make it available on our account, on your account. And then we're going to just uh, create this team spot from scratch, like we did in the previous video. Um, and basically get to this stage that we can see here. Um, so speaking of the first video, if you haven't watched that yet, uh, I'll pop a link in the description. Do have a look at that. That just tells you, you know, that we start off with Visual Studio Code. We install the Teams Toolkit uh, extension, and then we run through right from the very beginning how we can just deploy a bot to Teams. That varies slightly in the sense that what we're doing in that video is we're deploying it up into the Azure cloud, which would be what you'd do for like a production workload. Here, um, as you might be able to tell from the name here, uh, um, uh, bot local here, I'm just running it locally. It's just running off my, my machine using the Teams toolkit. Um, obviously, there's no reason we couldn't treat this the same and deploy it up to, up to Azure cloud if we wanted to. Again, I do recommend you look in the, uh, in the first video or at least in the previous video, um, link in the description to see how that is done. OK, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. And um, I'm just going to shut this down, get rid of all of this, OK? Because like I say, I, I don't really want to start from something that we've done already. Uh, I really want to. So here we are in the Azure portal. Uh, the thing we, that we want to find here is Azure AI Foundry. You may not have it in, uh, in at the top of your page. If you do not, then you can just search for it here and it should come up. So we're going to click on that. These are workspaces. OK, um, they're just ways of organizing things for projects. Um, this is the project which I'm using um, for this video. And then what you're looking for is this this link here. Go to Azure AI Foundry portal. That'll take us here. OK, um, so at the moment we're in the chat playground. This is quite useful, actually, if, if you uh, if you knock this down. So you will need to deploy a model first, but you can come in here and you can sort of chat with your model. Uh, you can give it a different system prompt. And I can say, uh, hi there, what is the capital of France? Because I've forgotten. I haven't. But, uh, but you know, and it can come back and, and give you a response. So you can test out these various models before you sort of like write any code around them in anger. 
if you want to. Um, but that's not where we want to be at the moment. So start from scratch. So we're going to come up here to model catalog and I am going to choose GPT-40 mini. Oops. Okay, so what I've got here, global standard, provision managed. Yeah, okay, global standard is the one I want. So I'm gonna click on deploy there. Global standard, looks good. It's gonna deploy it to France Central. Uh, okay, and then I just click on deploy. So you'll do the same, but just you will have chosen deep sea instead. After this, it will uh, quite helpfully give me sort of various code snippets and things like that, but we don't actually want to use these. Um, in fact, the only thing we might want to use is that endpoint there, but again, it will make those available later on. In fact, here they are down the side. Um, let me move myself over here a little bit. Right, so there's two bits of information that we really want from this, okay? And it's in this endpoint section here, okay? And I want to copy that there okay and i'm just going to save that into a text file i have uh open on my laptop screen here and i also want the key which is here okay um so we're going to need that in a moment when we get into visual studio code and go through the process of setting up our our bot in teams uh sorry in teams toolkit so for now, I'm just going to switch to my um, to my command line. I'm going to load up code in this particular uh, Visual Studio Code in this particular folder. I'm going to come down here to my Teams Toolkit. Again, if you don't have this, have a look at the, the link in the description below. That's the kind of the, the video preceding this one. It shows you exactly how to install that. Okay, but once you've got it installed, you should have this option here of create a new app. So I'm going to click on new project, uh, create a new app here, which is going to give me this drop down, and I'm going to choose custom engine agent. Okay, basic chatbot, and my language of choice, Python. And then in the previous video, we chose OpenAI, and we just said, well, you know, whatever OpenAI um, model is default in the toolkit in the scaffolding, which I think is uh, GPT 3.5, by the way. Um, but we're going to choose this time Azure OpenAI. OK, so what it's asking for now, sorry, I'll just drag myself over here, is input your open AI service key or set it later in the project. So the service key, if we just switch back to our um, AI foundry again, is this value in here. OK, so I'm going to copy that in. I'm going to paste it in and press enter. OK, now it's asking for the endpoint. So again, this is this value here. Now, we've got to be a little bit careful here because it isn't. So yeah, thanks for that, Microsoft. Um, what you'll find, so what we get is this here, or we, you'll have some kind of probably unique identifier here, France Central, Cognitive Services, so on and so forth. What we actually want to give it is everything up to the, that slash there. So after the azure.com, leave that forward slash in, get rid of everything else, okay? If you don't, You'll get an error later on it won't be obvious why you'll get a lot of 404s it'll be like why isn't this working that's what it is it just wants the base domain name i'm assuming because the sdk adds on all the necessary path information once it's figured out you know what, what, how we've configured it so we're just going to put that in um and then it's asking azure openai deployment name all right so what we're looking for here just to make things less confusing, I think in the video we'll come back here. So this is what you should see. Yeah, you should see DeepSeek R1. You should be copying that DeepSeek hyphen R1 uh, exactly as shown. Um, the endpoint will be the same, so that's okay. So I'm going to come back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to put in DeepSeek R1 in there, and I'm going to press Enter. So then it's going to say, well, look, where do you want to put this project? Okay, and I am going to put this into one called teams bot with dsr1 a cryptic name if ever i heard one there we go okay and then oh, it's asking for an application name so i'm going to say tv dsr1 and away we go i can now get rid of this code window here because it's no longer relevant and this 
is my project. Okay, happy days. So, hopefully that's big enough for you to see. Um, so basically, we, we've got our we've got our um, our team spot code here. Okay, again, as I've been over in the previous videos, you have various environment files here. We're going to be testing it using local, which means that the application, if you like, the the sort of the server of the Teamspot will run right here on my laptop, um, but I'll be able to access it via Teams, just me. If I want to then deploy it, then obviously uh, we can do that using um, using the Teams toolkits, environment provisioning and uh, lifecycle management. I cover all of that in the previous video, so do check that out. I won't go too deeply into that here. So we're just going to be running it locally. So um, one thing I need to do, though, before we go and test this is that when I first tried this, uh, I tried talking to DeepSeek and I got an error up so basically suggesting that um, something called the temperature in the top P hadn't been set. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with models, uh, you know, what is the temperature? What is the top P? You can kind of think of these as two sort of little knobs or levers, which we can adjust to uh, affect how sort of creative or how random uh, the the output of the tokens is. So, you know, a, a very sort of crude example, but one that's used regularly is that if I wanted to, my model to be quite inventive, perhaps I'm getting it to create copy, then I would turn the temperature right up. Um, and I might do the same with the top P. If I wanted it to be more sort of factual uh, and stick to what it knew, then I might want to turn that temperature in top P down. Now, where do we do that in here? Well, that's a very good question. I spent quite a while trying to figure that out and uh, changing code in various places. Um, I'm not sure if, if you have a look at the code, right? Generally, for most libraries, you normally set that information when you set up the model. So I was trying to add stuff in here and it was going, no, I don't know what that is. So I was like, all right, fair enough. And then uh, a little bit of sort of grepping and search, searching around later, um, of course, we come across this, which is the config for the prompt manager. And lo and behold, we have uh, in here temperature 0 0.9. If I recall correctly, it's going to complain about the top P not being set. So I'm just going to I'm just going to change that to point one for now. That should do. OK, so with that set now, I'm going to come back to Teams Toolkit. I'm going to click on local. I'm going to say go, but I'm going to say debug in Teams. Okie doke. Right. So this has, uh, by way of an error, reminded me that I forgot to do something. Isn't that lovely? Right. OK, so let's stop that. The reason this is coming up is because I didn't follow my own advice and create a virtual environment. OK, so if we go back here, uh, you see this requirements.txt. If, um, if you have uh, if you have any experience with Python whatsoever, to be honest, you'll, you'll recognize requirements.txt, but you can kind of think of this as the uh, the list of, well, dependencies, okay, for this particular Python project. Now, again, if you go and have a look at the previous video, you will see that adding this in is pretty important. Not if you're running it locally, but definitely if you're deploying to the Azure cloud, okay? So I just add that in now as a matter of, uh, as a matter of course, I'm just going to keep that there. I'm then going to press Command, Shift, and P. I suspect this is Control, Shift, and P on Windows, uh, if that's your poison. And then I'm looking for this. I just, I mean, it comes up straight away for me, but if you type in Python create environment, I want to create a VM. Yes, uh, I'm going to use 3.12.9, just because I have that installed, and that's my current Python version. And it's asking me which requirements do you want to install? And I'm going to say this one, which is this file that we have in the background here. OK, so um, it has loaded up Teams for me in this incognito window. And then it's saying, OK, this is the bot that we're going to talk to. Do you want me to add it? So obviously I do. So I add that. It's going to have a little bit of a think and then it should come up with an open button. There we go. And now I can I should be able to talk to my bot. And if that works, that's fundamentally it, right? This is this is what we're here to see. We should be talking to DeepSeek. Given the amount of time it's taking to respond, I highly suspect we are indeed talking to DeepSeek 
yeah, there we go. So here's here's DeepSeek sort of in a monologue about how it should respond, and then here's its actual response. Okay, so there we go. It's working. It's that simple. Key steps are going into Azure portal, going into the IO Foundry, deploying our model, copying those values in as part of the the, the sort of the teams uh, teams toolkit bot creation process. And as long as you just make sure that when you copy this value here, okay, that instead of pasting in the entire thing, you just paste in the sort of the root domain, if you like, which will go to that there. Okay, so that gets us up to talking to DeepSeek. So I go there, I go okay. That is now going to create me a virtual environment, and that way we won't get that error when I next run it. There we go. So you can see down here it says the following environment is selected, and uh, yeah, that's the one we want. Okay, so now we can come back down to here, and I can click on this little play icon next to logo, uh, next to local, and I can say debug in Teams, and with any luck, this time it will work. So a next logical step could be to get it working with Phi 4. I did try doing it, didn't work, okay? I ended up with uh, a 500 error. Now, all that said, I sort of did some validation. I thought initially it's probably something that I was configuring incorrectly. However, I did some further validation using some different tools in Azure AI Foundry and essentially found that I got the same result, but from a different direction. Um, so, I very much believe that this is something at the Microsoft end. Um, so uh, I have logged uh, against the team toolkit, uh, GitHub repo, I've logged an issue in there. So if you really wanna see uh, Phi 4 work with, uh, with a Teams bot, then by all means, feel free to lend your weight to this particular issue. Again, I will pop a link to that in the description. Um, so that's it for today's video. Um, I do hope I can get this uh, Phi 4 talking to it. And once I do, I'll, I'll do another video and we can, we can see that working. Um, I am working currently on how we can use the team toolkit to uh, essentially get external data in. Um, there are lots of ways we can do that. We can kind of do it the, the, the sort of the official Microsoft way, or we could kind of go off on our own track if we wanted to. I wanna see if I can do it the official Microsoft way, just because that'll probably cause less problems further down the line. So um, I will be along with another video. I just wanted to get this out there uh, to, to, to let everybody know, everybody who is kind enough to comment, uh, really to say thank you. And, you know, hopefully uh, this will answer some of your questions in the meantime. But um, if you found this content useful, please do like and subscribe, um, give it a thumbs up and all that. Uh, certainly, you know, if you've got something to share, pop it in the comments. Uh, I always respond to all of the comments and uh, I love hearing them. So or reading them, however you wanna say that. Uh, so thanks everybody, until next time, uh, I've been Dylan Humphreys and I'll be back with more Teams bot type tips in the future. Thanks all.